This video provides an overview of the A1 Persona poster in IAB 260 for 2016. This video will look at what you need to do, the criteria for the assignment, some examples, and at the end I'll talk about some places that you can get help. So let's start with what you need to do. Your task for this assignment is to create a persona poster based on yourself. You can do it for somebody else if you would like, but um, obviously you know yourself better than you know other people, so it may be that you find it easiest to focus on yourself. I think it's also useful for you to think about how you use social technology because it allows you to identify the biases or the assumptions that you might make when you're dealing or looking at how other people use social technology. So by understanding yourself better, you then know what you're bringing to the task of understanding other people. So here's the requirements in very brief, which I've gone through in class before. The assignment is due at the end of week seven on Sunday 24th of April at 11.59 p.m. Now in class in week five, I talked about the fact that the, there is a public holiday on Monday the 25th of April and that therefore I would give you some extra time so that you can make use of that public holiday. Um, please submit by 5 p.m. on Monday the 25th of April. This will remain the official due date, um, but you can have up until um, the end of day on Monday at 5 p.m. to submit. In week eight, we'll be having an exhibition at The Cube um, at 6 p.m. on Friday night. This assignment is worth 25% 20, of your mark in the unit. And your task is to create a persona poster, obviously, which I'll talk through in more detail in a moment. So first of all, let's look at the learning outcomes. This assignment ties into two learning outcomes for this unit. The first one is apply analytical and critical thinking skills to understand the way people experience social technologies, including how people construct personal and professional online identities. You'll be using yourself as a case study to uh, use these analytical and critical thinking skills and to develop this understanding of how you experience social technologies. As I mentioned before, this doesn't just tell you about yourself, it tells you about approaches to understanding people, the kinds of things you need to know in order to understand how people use social technology. It tells you about the assumptions that you bring to the task of understanding others. So it's a really important um, aspect of the unit. The second learning outcome that is present in this assignment is number four, apply verbal, written and visual communication skills that effectively convey information in social media contexts. In social media, you uh, convey information in various different formats, but one of those formats is visual information. So in this assignment, we're asking you to create a resource that will be um, engaged with using um, the eye, not just um, written text. So people will be looking at your presentation on the cube in a poster format, and it's a different type of format for you to learn to develop. Of course, there are similarities between your persona poster and infographics. Um, so again, there's another tie-in to social media there. The rationale for this assignment is that you need to be able to understand people as social technology users and how people construct their identities in social technology spaces. So we're getting you to profile yourself as a particular type of user and you're going to incorporate an identity map in order to explore your own online identity and how those identities that you have relate to each other in different spaces. So you can take two perspectives to this assignment to help you frame the way you talk about the persona. The first perspective you can take is that you're a UX designer who is profiling a particular type of user. In this case, you'll be using yourself as a case study, but you'll talk about yourself in the third person. So you'll write he or she, him or her, rather than I or me. The second approach is to do it as though you're talking about yourself. So you can say I, me and my in your text and use, it, use this as a way to explore social media use from your own perspective. Now having run this assignment a couple of times before, I know that the most appropriate um, the most appropriate approach will vary for different people, but people do tend to find it easier to approach this in a third person perspective so that you're um, 
taking a step back from yourself, you're being a UX designer and you're profiling a particular type of user. So using terms like he or she, him or her, rather than I or me. It doesn't really matter which perspective you choose, you just need to be consistent in that perspective so that your poster is consistent and cohesive throughout. So there's two components to the assignment. The first one is the persona poster, which will allow you to think critically about your use of social technologies and what impacts on them. Um, it probably won't have a lot of detail on your online identity. And then there's the identity map, which is um, designed to allow you to think critically about your online identity and allow you to map out your presences in social media. Together, these two components will provide a holistic view of you as a social technology user. Now you can go either one of two ways with this. You can create your persona poster and your identity map separately, or you can incorporate them into the same item. So one of the approaches you might like to do is to use one and a half screens for your persona poster and on the bottom half of the second screen include your identity map. It's completely up to you how you do this, but just as a rough guide, I think half the screen should be enough for the identity map component. So the requirements in detail. First of all, it has to be an electronic poster. We're going to display these posters on the cube at our exhibition. You've got the option of using one or two screens. Um, if you're using two screens, you'll need to swipe to access the second screen on the cube. I've included here the dimensions for um, imaging programs and PowerPoint, so you can set up your document in the right dimensions. Now you must use those dimensions or your poster will not display on the cube. And if it does display on the cube, it may not look um, the way you intended. So please make sure you follow those dimensions. You can use both words and images, and in fact, you will need to use some words for your backstory and for things like your um, persona type, but use text judiciously. So people will be looking at these things and, and trying to absorb the information at a glance. So use words um, judiciously and images effectively to convey meaning. Onto images um, more specifically, you need to make sure that you're using only Creative Commons or public domain images. So if you are using any images that are copyright um, that you, or that you don't have permission to use, then we will be deducting marks because that is infringing somebody else's copyright. It's also really important that you attribute images correctly, just like you would if you were referencing somebody's ideas in a written assignment. There is no set template for this assignment, so there's no set template requirement. Um, it's up to you to do some reading and make your own decisions about what you're going to include, how you're going to lay out your poster for effective information design, and how much detail you should provide um, on each of the elements. This is completely your choice. We've spent time in class talking about persona posters, and I've given you some resources to look at, so it's up to you to really tailor this um, to provide the best possible um, persona poster you can. Of course, you also then need to include an identity map, which is part of your requirements, and I've talked earlier about how you will do this. Um, as I said, you can do it either in your poster or separately, but if it's in your poster, then half the screen should be enough. Just remember that this assignment is actually a persona poster, not a persona. So I mentioned in class that we're using the conventions of a persona, but that people will be engaging with this um, item in a different way than they would a persona. So a persona would be like a work tool that you might look at on your desktop on an A4 piece of paper. Your persona poster is different. It's going up on the cube, it allows you to include more information because I'm looking for a real holistic academic um, analysis and it um, is a different size format and has a different audience. So it's not going to sit on someone's desk for them to use as a reference tool. It's going to be engaged with um, on, on the cube in a physical space where people are standing around and looking at posters. So make sure you design for the poster format um, so it needs to be very visually appealing, easy to understand, um, designed for use on the cube. So bear in mind the fact that you'll have two screens that, and only one screen will be seen at once, plus, of this, plus the size dimensions. And of course, you need to design for visual impact. So personas usually look pretty good because they're generally made by designers. But in this case, you're designing a poster. So the visual impact is even more important. 
This is also a bit different because we're going for that real completeness. As I said earlier, I'm looking for a holistic, complete view of you as a social technology user. Remember, this is an academic task rather than a practical tool. So you do need to use your higher order thinking skills and get to a really deep level of analysis. Okay, so now that we've looked at the requirements, let's move on to the criteria in more detail. So the first criteria is um, related to the analysis and critical discussion component of the assignment. And uh, the very first criteria is highly effective analysis of the purpose of the task, resulting in a poster that fully meets the needs of the audience. So this is related to what I was just talking about and the fact that your audience is a user of the cube um, and it's your peers who are looking to understand you as a technology user and it's me as your lecturer who's also looking to understand that. We want to see very clearly presented, defined and developed ideas um, and that they're bang on topic. So no superfluous information, um, but you have clearly um, encapsulated all the key information and defined and developed that appropriately. We want your poster to be extremely effective in clearly and concisely summarizing all the key information about the persona, including demographic information like age, gender, educational background, some personal history, behaviors and practices, motivations for use, goals, emotional and psychological factors, platforms used, methods of access, including devices used, and other details commonly included in personas. We also want you to develop this so that you're, you are including the elements that you think is really important. One of the points there, behaviors and practices, is actually very, very broad um, and could incorporate a whole range of things in there. So um, really be creative with this. Do some reading about personas and develop your own list of things that you will include. Um, and you'll find that a lot of that will fit under that behaviors and practices heading. Make sure you include the emotional and psychological factors. So think about pain points, think about likes and dislikes, think about positive and negative experiences and how they impact on the person. Um, so that's a very important one and it's one that takes a little bit more thought um, and, and probably one that um, was most tricky for people to get their heads around in uh, last time I ran this assignment. So we want you to provide deep insight and a range of interesting observations about the persona. So don't just tell us the run of the mill stuff. Um, think about interesting things about you as a person and how that relates to your social technology use. For example, you might have some particular hobbies that relate to your social technology use in some way, um, or there may be something unusual about you that you can pull out and um, use that insight to provide some interesting information on your poster. The text content needs to be extremely effective and thoughtfully consider how key information presented impacts on social technology use. So take the text and make sure that all of your text is highly relevant and highly effective and provides a, that kind of deeper level of critical analysis that you may not be able to get to in images. This next one, persona is highly resonant and reads as a real person and is clearly grounded in reality, is very important. So this is about profiling yourself as a user. Um, and so we want to see your personality in the persona. And this is always the case with personas. They need to read like a real person in order to be relevant and useful. So this is a really important factor. Uh, finally, persona name is extremely insightful and thoughtful and clearly identifies a type of user. Um, so by, by persona name, I mean the type that you apply to the person. So you have a real name, but you might also be a lurker, a social butterfly, a um, uh, perhaps a um, judicious commenter for someone who comments um, just occasionally on particularly interesting things. So we want you to um, clearly identify a type that uh, covers you as a social technology user. Now, obviously, you're going to perform differently in different spaces in social media. So we're looking for you to provide kind of a summary type that can be applied as an umbrella over all of your different um, ways and, and types of 
um, identity and how you represent yourself in different spaces and how you use different tools. And that is not necessarily an easy task. So don't think of, don't think you can just do this at the last minute. You need to really critically consider your use. And we need to see that that persona name, that type relates to the identity that you have conveyed or to the person that you have conveyed in your poster. So let's move on then to the presentation criteria. Um, we want you to be extremely effective in incorporating the essential elements and conventions of a persona. So while this isn't a persona proper, you do need to include all of the persona elements. So what you'll be doing is adding more to that to flesh out your persona in more detail. Your identity map needs to be extremely effective in conveying key information and relationships. Your poster needs to be polished, professional, and very visually appealing. It's really easy to create a great poster using a very simple color scheme, some free icons, and some free fonts, um, but it will take you some time. So don't leave the design aspect till the last minute. If in doubt, go for very simple. Simple is often very effective. The next criteria is information design is extremely effective, clearly presenting information in an appropriate structure. So think about the way that you include information on the poster and how the different aspects of the poster relate to each other to create a clear and cohesive um, picture of yourself as a social technology user. Remember when we talked about infographics, I said that infographics are discrete objects and you don't need any additional information in order to understand what's being portrayed in the infographic. The same needs to be true for your persona poster assignment. We're looking for excellent use of images, graphs, typography, and other visual elements to communicate key information. We're looking for something that is extremely easy to read and can be easily scanned to get a summary view of the persona. We're looking for clarity um, and consistent use of standard grammar, spelling, and punctuation and we don't want to see any proofreading errors. So make sure you do put some effort into the presentation for this um, because it is a visual medium. It's really important that you um, pay attention to the design and that it is uh, really effective. So let's look at some examples from last year. First up here is Olivia. This poster was created in PowerPoint and it has heaps and heaps of information in it. So um, this particular poster is really comprehensive. Um, there are some aspects of it that could be improved. For example, I'd like to see a bit more backstory in text, but as a whole, this is a very good assignment um, and represents uh, this person's persona in social media in a very um, cohesive and, and clear way. Um, there are, as I mentioned, elements that could be improved to help with scannability. For example, um, the social networks aspect where Olivia has talked about um, what proportion of time she spends on each channel. Um, that may be more easily understood if it was, for example, a bar graph. So think about the particular information that you're representing and the best way to convey that information. Next up is Nathan, who is the activist, and this is a shorter poster. He's used one screen rather than two, and um, there is some really effective use of uh, images and icons here. Um, the platform usage is really interesting compared to Olivia's. So here, um, Nathan is actually um, partially colored the uh, circles to indicate how much he's using those platforms. So it's more easily understood at a glance. I also really like um, that um, Nathan has included here his Myers-Briggs personality type because that may um, tell you something about the way he uses social media. Next up, we've got Anthony who has used a more colorful um, design to tell us about his use of social media. Um, so this one was got, also got a very good mark. It contains lots of really useful information about Anthony as a social technology user and um, its strength really is the content uh, and the images and the way that he has put together this presentation. It's very colorful. Um, it's and bright and eye-catching. He's chosen icons that really um, help to understand him as a social technology user. For example, at a glance, I can see that he um, is a gamer, he likes soccer, um, he likes to travel, 
um, I can get that kind of um, impression very quickly just from glancing at the persona poster. Finally, this one I picked um, to show you for what it offers in terms of design. Um, in this case, uh, Melissa is a big user of uh, YouTube, so she chose to lay out her poster like it was a YouTube screen. So she's got the video up the top demonstrating how much she uses different social media um, social networks and then she's used um, commenting and profile icons to convey the other information which I think is very um, very effective in this case. So have a look through these examples in some more detail. They're up in a blog post on the unit site so you can have a look at them at any time. I also included the, the identity maps for these students. Last year the identity map task was separate um, and so they did it in a separate file. Just while we're here on Melissa's um, persona poster, I'll just point out, you might have noticed on um, some of the posters that there is a number on them. That's just because I gave everyone a number to um, help organize the posters on the cube and I will be giving you guys numbers as well. That will help with organizing posters but also help with voting on best poster at the exhibition. Okay, so where can you get help with this assignment? The assignment page is the hub for help information related to this assignment. So um, there's a page for each assignment on the unit site that you can access under the assessment menu. And what you'll see here at the top of the page under the, um, the table providing the overview of the assignment, I've actually embedded a feed of all of the posts on the blog related to this assignment. So as I add new posts about the assignment to the blog, you'll see them come up here. Um, so, so far we've got uh, information on attributing Creative Commons licensed images. We've got a post about using Pinterest to source fonts, icons and other visual elements. Um, there's a post about um, how you can share your draft with your peers. And there's also a post about example posters and those are the examples I just showed you. So keep an eye on this page. Um, also, you'll obviously get the uh, blog post notification if you're subscribed when uh, a new post goes up about the assignment. I wanted to refer specifically to the infographic resources. These will be really useful to you in creating a really cohesive and coherent um, poster. So please do have a look at those as well. Under the assessment link, you'll also find a link to referencing an attribution and this information will help you with uh, referencing any images that you may use in your poster. Don't forget the easiest way to do that is to include a QR code that links to a blog post that you've made with the information about your referencing and attribution. Finally, I really want you guys to share your draft work on this assignment. I think learning is social and that we learn by discussing things together. So post your work and share your ideas with your peers and get some feedback from them and from us. To help you, fi you find each other's posts about your persona poster progress, please tag any posts you make that you want to come up in that feed with persona poster progress. You'll be able to access your peers' posts about their persona posters by clicking on the link. Um, it's, there's a little feature box on the home page. So that's it for this video about the assignment. I know it's quite lengthy and I thank you for sticking through till the end. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions about the assignment, please post them in the forums on the unit site or you can also comment on the assignment page on the site as well.